Let's cover a few more consequences of climate change. One of the more shocking changes in the environment that has occurred are in lakes, freshwater lakes, at, in the uh, which occur in terminal drainages. These include Lake Chad and the Aral Sea, which have been steadily drying over the last several decades um, in, uh, in, course, in conjunction with droughts and sometimes with local mismanagement. Both of these examples are parts of the world where resource, uh, resources are scarce and the drying of these lakes has led to dramatic changes in the local economies and sometimes political and social instabilities. Elsewhere in the world, changes are occurring um, and they're not, uh, many of them are related to drying of the environment, such as the reduction in snow water equivalent in North America. Uh, that is associated with increasing drought and increasing overall temperature, meaning a lower snowpack and less snow, snow overall. Um, the increases in temperature mean that the snowpack la lasts for a shorter duration in the, in the year, and both changes mean a drying of, look, of the lands, of the soils, and an increase in drought stress, increased drought stress. Another um, <clears throat> concerning problem uh, relates to the distribution of diseases, and specifically diseases that are vectored by insects. Many insects vector forest diseases or human diseases, and there is an ex expectation that dengue will spread, for example, further south in Australia with increasing global temperature. Serious potential problem. Now, there is some suggestion that an increase in CO2 concentration could actually result in a biological fertilization. I mean, plants need carbon. Plant needs, plants need carbon in order to run photosynthesis. So wouldn't more carbon be better? Well, it turns out that plants very quickly saturate in terms of the amount of carbon that they can assimilate, except when they have increased availability of nitrogen. So um, plants rapidly plateau in terms of the precipitation unless you can add nitrogen. The other problem is that um, uptake of CO2, it will rapidly decrease. It tends to plateau in most gro average growing temperatures, and it will rapidly decrease if those get too high. So CO2 fertilization in the atmosphere really probably won't save us from um, changes in atmospheric chemistry. Uh, because we probably simply cannot afford to add enough nitrogen, maybe to our crops, and certainly we probably can't afford to add enough nitrogen to our forests. The cost of adding nitrogen rapidly increases to a level where costs exceed the, uh, <clears throat> the amount that we get in return. So what kinds of changes are we expecting? Well. Um, Good news is, a little bit of good news, we have models that are robust, they're relatively accurate, they have a lot of usefulness to them, and they tell us something about how we can expect things to change without um, uh, changes in our technology or reduction, in, uh, or changes in land management or reduction in, in CO2 release overall. Warming increases surface temperature, um, particularly in the oceans. This is one of the big results from the recent International Panel on Climate Change report that came out last year. Uh, this increase in temp water temperature of the oceans increases the evaporation uh, potential and has the implication of stronger storms, cyclonic storms, hurricanes, and so forth, typhoons. Um, and uh, it also is expected to lead to a loss of sea ice which could increase sea level, uh, sea level um, heights.
Those changes, specifically an increase in CO2 concentration in the atmosphere, is also expected to increase pH of ocean waters, which would reduce the capacity of the oceans to sequester CO2. There's actually a lot of CO2 that's sequestered just in um, ocean water. It's dissolved there. And the projections are pretty stark and concerning. They are um, certainly at a degree where we should all pay attention to them. On land, we have a number of, ink of changes that are of concern. Warming on land is expected to reduce glacial ice. It's also to, uh, expected to uh, lead to lower uh, snowpacks. And that is a potential, really, it's true across the world, many different parts of the world, many different environments. And it will likely have disproportionate impacts in areas that are seasonally dry. Seasonally dry. Um, one thing that was pointed out in the IPC report was the loss of uh, the potential to create, create ice stupas, which are these formations of ice that are created in the highlands of the Himalayas. Um, and I had never heard of these before, but they're a smart way to cache water. Um, it's cold in these environments, and so water can be stored by freezing it on land, and it will re release slowly over time. But that won't work if you don't have low enough temperature and if you don't have a consistent source of water. The loss of, of ice on land, glacial ice, will is expected to lead to a short-term increase in water outflow, but the loss of that reservoir will ultimately lead to lower water outflows and lower water availability downstream. That is an expectation that we expect in many different mountains across the world, including in the Sierra Nevada. The loss of snowpack has very serious implications for the downstream economies and for water availability in forests.